This is part two of my series on advanced Logi stuff or incursions. The first video covered important interface stuff like overview settings, HUD layout, and hotkeys. I know things like that are boring, but they can greatly improve your execution and help you put the information presented in this guide to good use. So check it out if you haven't done so already. Also, I have no intention of covering basic Logi School stuff in this video. I might do a video about it one day, but in the meantime, I recommend attending the live class. Different communities may do certain stuff differently, but it will cover the kind of stuff that you need to know in order not to be a detriment to fleet safety. Links down below. Fleetmates are supposed to broadcast for shields whenever they're yellow boxed by the Sancha. For various reasons, however, this doesn't always happen. The pilot may be new, DC'd, falling asleep, picking up wife aggro, whatever. Thus, if we want to prevent as many ship losses as possible and be the best Lodgy pilots that we can be, we need to be proactive. We need to quickly identify who has aggro, broadcast them so that our fellow Lodgy can quickly establish reps on them, and lock and start repping them ourselves. There are numerous sources of information that can alert us to who has aggro. So, whenever there is a new wave or I expect a switch, I constantly bounce my eyes between those sources until I identify them, or the pilot broadcast. These items include the watch list, fleet broadcast history, in-space messages, pre-locked targets, and the lasers out in space. And the logs and messages window is useful for checking out any in-space messages that you might have missed. Alright, let's briefly go through this stuff. Obviously, if the health bar of a pilot on your watch list is turning red, he's taking damage. However, watch list health bars usually lag behind. Moreover, a troll might not be doing enough damage for you to really be able to tell. So, instead, what you really want to watch for is names flashing red. And once again, FCs and other Logi Bros tend to be big offenders for late broadcasting, so I like to keep them on my watch list. Besides, if they die, it can lead to more losses. Of course, you should always lock any pilot who broadcasts for shields, but I recommend pre-locking a handful of aggro magnets. How many you should lock will depend on how many total locks you have, as well as how many link recipients or cat buddies you have to keep locked. However, as a rule of thumb, I recommend that new Logi pilots keep six locks open. Once you get better with your hotkeys, managing your locks, and knowing what to expect in sites, you can consider reducing that number. Messages in space often provide the first warning that a late broadcast has aggro. This is because the frigs have fast lock times and generate messages when they use scrams. It's also useful for seeing who actually has the attuning whenever any cap broadcast shenanigans are going on. Regardless, the attuning messages will only appear if the pilot is within scram range. Fortunately, the Atuni have a scram range of 24k and a newt range of 25k, which means that if the pilot is outside of scram range, they are more than likely to be outside of newt range as well. Also, do note that I have seen split aggro where different pilots each got an Atuni, so definitely be on the lookout for that when you have split aggro during the third wave of the TPPH. Finally, you can just look in space where the lasers are going. The rats often shoot in groups, and their weapon graphics tend to stand out rather well, so it's pretty easy to spot. To make my life easier, however, I have removed drones and wrecks from my brackets in space, and I'll make my camera look at the AAA, who remains stationary after reaching his anchor point. I also try to zoom in as much as possible while keeping the whole fleet unobscured by HUD windows. And yeah, Lashaks did mess me up a little bit when they first started showing up in fleets, but you get used to it. They put out one big persistent beam, while Sancho lasers tend to come from multiple sources and flash on and off with individual volleys. Once you determine who has aggro, use your hotkey to broadcast target. And please don't use the context menu, it's painfully slow. X is the default hotkey, but I remap mine to tilde. It works great, and I highly recommend it. And do note that broadcasting targets doesn't work the same way as broadcasting for yourself. In order to broadcast someone else, you hold the hotkey and then click on the target. Because of this, broadcasting others is mostly reliable. Unfortunately, broadcasting for the watch list can be flaky. It turns out that it, it won't work if the window has focus. So I've been trying to make a habit to first click in space before trying to broadcast from the watch list. Past that, you can try upvoting my request to fix it in the small things thread. Maybe it might move it up on CCP's to-do list. Link down below. Anyway, Broadcasting from brackets or pre-locked targets should be self-explanatory, but if you see a message in space or in your log, you need to find the player to broadcast them. Because of this, 
I have my overview extended far enough where I don't need to scroll, and I keep it sorted alphabetically by default. And do note that I don't broadcast everyone. Like, if someone picks up aggro with three frigs left on the field, I'll just wrap them. And this is especially true if someone picked up the remnants of a wave a second or two before the next one spawns. I don't want to trick the Lodgy squad into spooling up two or three reps on the wrong guy. That being said, I do always broadcast everyone in TCRCs. They might start with the troll or two, but that can eventually turn into full room aggro, so better safe than sorry. And to clarify, I recommend broadcasting first and then locking. If they have full room aggro, they're going to need reps for more than just one Lodgy ship. So it's like the opposite of oxygen mask. Prioritize helping the whole Lodgy squad and then worry about yourself. Alright, so the rats are very predictable when it comes to spawns and aggro. In TPPHs, it's the last tagged Osti which will spawn waves 2 or 3, and in NRFs, you have to clear the entire wave before it spawns the next. The spawns in TCRCs are all on timers, but you don't need a stopwatch or anything to figure it out. If the AAA calls normal, expect the deltals and the tuning waves to spawn about 10 seconds after landing. And if the AAA calls preload, expect them to be on the field and aggress in the AAA when you land. Alright, let's look at aggro types. Who is likely to get aggro will depend on what's going on with the rats. Initial aggro for when the fleet first enters a pocket usually goes to one of the first guys to land and become targetable. Note that this does not mean the first guy. It may go to him or it may go to the second or third. Thus, a pre-lock the first couple of guys who land with me as one of us will most likely get it. New wave aggro is mostly random, but it does have a tendency to go to ships that have separated from the rest of the fleet. So, I'll pre-lock guys who have Leroy Gates or who have wandered off. Of course, your repping power will be diminished if they're in your fall off, but they're also likely to be further away from the rats as well, so they'll take less damage and probably be outside of newt range. Anyway, new wave aggro is the most dangerous, as reinforcement waves tend to be bigger and nastier than the initial spawns, closer to their targets, and at full strength. About 45 seconds after initial wave aggro, the Sancho will pick a new target based primarily upon threat generation. Often, this means the guy who does the most DPS will get it, but e war modules will also move players up on the priority list. Regardless, expect switches to frequently go to Vindy's in all sites. A few less shack pilots can also draw aggro in TPPHs and NRFs, but they're most likely to get it in TCRCs, where they have time to spool up to full damage. Thus, you should pay careful attention to both Vindy's and Le Shacks in those sites. While the Sancha have often been thinned out by the time of the switch, they can still be quite dangerous due to late broadcast and Lodgy Bros being slow to switch their reps. The most dangerous switches are during the fourth and final wave of NRFs, and any switch during a TCRC. Thus, it is especially important to be alert and ready at those times. Fortunately, some pilots will call the switch over voice comms when losing aggro in order to help save the guy after them. Speaking of which, if you have full room aggro and know a dangerous switch is coming, watch the PVE tab of your overview and call the switch over comms as soon as you start seeing yellow boxes. It will help new, distracted, and fatigued Lodgy know that they need to cycle down their reps and look for the next guy with aggro. You'll eventually get a feel for the community and just begin to intuitively know who are the biggest dogs in fleet. In the meantime, here are a few tips to help point you in the right direction. First, your common aggro magnets are going to be Vindicators. While the Shacks can out DPS the Vindies, they take time to spool up to full damage. Thus, they are more likely to draw it on TCRC tower bashes. Past that, the Auto Targeter and Target Painter on Bargas contributes a lot to their threat generation, so they can sometimes become magnets depending on who else is in fleet. Speaking of which, using all four reppers will put a target on your back, so that's why you want to use three or less unless you absolutely have to. And yeah, if things get hairy during the TCRC, it is very likely that one of the Lodgy squad will pick up the switch. So keep a close eye on your Lodgy bros and be prepared to quickly establish staggered reps on them. You can also look for optimal and agromagnet badges on TeamSpeak. And if all else fails, just pay attention during fleets. Even if it's a late night fleet with zero aggro magnets, there will still be a handful of people who generate the most threat. Oh, and be sure to shame the Vindy pilots if the nightmares start regularly drawing aggro. Also, you'll get a feel for how much damage the Sancha should be putting out after a while, so 
If you're in a situation where it feels like your lock targets are taking less damage than they should, immediately start looking for where the aggro is going because it is going somewhere. Like, the Sancho haven't suddenly become paralyzed by feelings of insignificance and futility. So, zoom in or out and look for them lasers. Honestly, uh, split aggro is often more annoying than it is dangerous. However, it is still important to lock all broadcasts as someone will eventually consolidate aggro and they may not rebroadcast when they do. This scenario is especially dangerous in TCRCs because of the amount of DPS that stays on the field. Anyway, let's take a look at the causes and how you should handle it. Drone aggro most frequently incurs in TPPHs when the drones don't attack the last tag to Austin before it dies. Regardless, if the Sancho kill a drone, they'll end up splitting their aggro. Same thing if they kill a player or the guy with aggro warps off. Once again, always lock all shield broadcasts. But what happens when you run out of locks? Well, first of all, try calling for impositions over comps before that happens. If you're running out of locks, odds are the rest of the logic squad is as well. So try to help everyone out by reminding people to broadcast imposition when they stop taking aggro. Past that, and you're going to have to make a judgment call because you can't sit around waiting for impositions while shield broadcasts go by on lock. If you have any pre-locks and they haven't broadcast, unlock them first. After that, try unlocking the players who have gone the longest without taking any noticeable damage. This is easier if you sort your locks into rows during cases of split aggro. Personally, I like to spread my locks into four columns. It makes it easy to see how many locks I have left at a glance, and if I unlock a target, newer locks will fall upwards to fill in the gaps. Finally, you can increase your total number of locks to a maximum of 12, if you fit a signal amplifier and train advanced target management 5. But I'll get more into SIG amps in a moment. You also want to broadcast and pre-lock DCs. Fortunately, many DCs will drop fleet and warp off when they disconnect. So if you have your overview set up like I suggested in part 1, these guys will easily catch your attention. Unfortunately, some DCs don't automatically drop fleet. These are the dangerous ones because they're harder to notice and their ships may actually continue firing which means they can still draw aggro. Regardless, for crash to desktops, players will often type or talk in team speak that they crash. However, for internet losses and OS crashes, they'll lose the ability to talk in team speak. Thus, it is imperative that Logic properly set up their overviews and pay attention to the user has left your channel server messages in the middle of sites. Anyway, I want to try to use Overwolf or something to try to display chat and server messages on the same screen as the client, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So if anyone does know how to do it, please let me know. All right, this stuff is actually the responsibility of Logi Masters, but it doesn't hurt to have a few extra eyes looking for potential problems. So first, keep an eye out to make sure that the fleet has boost while in sites and before the AAA gets sent into TCRCs. Also, periodically swivel the camera around just to make sure that no one is flying off in a random direction. Speaking of which, I think the main culprit for that is when your left mouse button is failing and it somehow registers a double click when you're clicking and dragging in space in order to rotate your camera. So, if you notice that you keep having this problem and don't know why, try replacing your left mouse button or your mouse and see if that fixes it. And, I'm still pretty bad about checking it, but I recently created a Logi Bros tab that just has Purple Logi on it. I tried to look at it 15 or so seconds after landing in order to make sure that Logi have established orbits and have their prop mods on. Just note that if they are taking aggro, they will likely be webbed. The FC will call for everyone to align with their prop mods off during stage exits. When this happens, I'll sort my Logi tab by velocity and give everyone a reasonable amount of time to align. After about 5 seconds, if I see that people still have zero velocity or have way too much, I'll call them out on comms to either please align or to turn their prop mods off. New bros, FCs, and triple Ds tend to be big offenders. However, I think it's often intentional with the triple D as they are trying to blap the frags before they align and start screwing with their tracking, so I don't call them out. Regardless, if someone still has zero velocity by the time the FC calls for battleships to warp, go ahead and broadcast them because they aren't going to get out on time. Then, try to look for any battleships that are aligned but not warping. Sometimes they're just being turds, but they might also be hung on a structure. Regardless, if you can lock it, broadcast it. If I'm in a bazzy, I'll try to be proactive with my cap service. Obviously, I'll try to respond to cap broadcasts as quickly as possible, but if there aren't any, 
I'll try to give a square to cap to any Vindies, Rogues, or Hyperions that I may have locked. When a couple of Bazzy pilots do this, it will dramatically cut down on the number of cap broadcasts you get and makes your DPS squad happy. Other candidates for cap are new bros who look like they are slow boating to their anchor and battleships that have joined the fleet late in the third room of TPPHs. They have likely used up a lot of their cap burning and could use a squirt. I'll also top off the AAA before a TCRC entrance. He has an increased chance of being neutered by the Niarja, Deltol, and Atunis, so I might as well try and top him off. I'm not sure that it'll help any with the Atunis, but it should buy him some extra time when under the new pressure of Niarjas and Deltols. Also, people often leave TCRCs with some shield damage, so I'll try to get them back to 100% on the next gate. Warp to me likes to run assaults in order to grind down influence. The NCS is relatively harmless, but the OCF can be quite dangerous at high levels of influence, and I've seen a few Lodgy ships pop with remarkable speed. As a result, I always pre-lock my Lodgy bros. They're squishy, and they're usually only four of them beside myself, so it's not going to eat up a lot of locks. Anyway, OCFs have a staged exit just like in TCRCs. Other than that, assaults are pretty straightforward, just be sure to stagger your reps. And finally, Lodgy are faster than the fat bottom battleships, which increases their chances of getting initial room aggro. This is great for TPPHs and NRFs, as you can pull the rats into the arms of the DPS squad. Starting with the NRF, I'll burn in the direction of the arrow until the frigs web me, before turning back in towards where the AAA will anchor. Same thing for the first two pockets of the TPPH. Burn in the direction of the arrow until the frigs web you, and then cut back towards the gate. Unfortunately, the frigs in the third pocket won't web you, so I don't have any good cues for when to cut back. I just kind of wing it. Anyway, if you do it right, the frigs will fly past the DPS squad, but you'll pull many of the battleships and Rami's into the Vindies. Alright, let me sell you guys on the signal amplifier. For those that don't know, the SIG amp is better than a one white poop. It's a low slot module that gives you two additional lock targets, faster lock times, and a decreased chance of being jammed. It also increases your targeting range, but that bonus is irrelevant to incursion lodging. First, lock times round up to the nearest whole second, so it won't always have a real-world effect, but when it does, it will make a significant difference. Unfortunately, you're still likely to get jammed by the Arnons in the third wave of TPPHs, but a SIG amp will significantly reduce your chances of being jammed by Niarja and TCRCs. For semis with Ladar Sensor Comp 5 and a Faction SIG amp, you'll only get jammed 1 out of 5 times by the Niarja. And for Bazzies, you'll be looking at a 1 in 7 chance, which isn't too shabby if you ask me. Anyway, it's not that hard to free up a low slot on the Incursion Lodgy fits, so SIG amps are relatively easy to fit. However, if your skills leave you short on cap and or power grid, you may have to decide between a SIG amp or something else. For the semi, I would always go with a SIG amp over an additional remote tracking computer. Links will help the fleet to run faster, but the SIG amp can save lives. Bazzies will ideally try to fit both, but if they can't make that work, they should probably roll with a Recibo. Lodgy being jammed by Niarja and TCRCs is especially dangerous, so helping the Triple D to quickly lock and kill them will make a big difference to fleet safety. And I'm getting into Lodgy school stuff here, but let's talk implants. So let me be clear I am opposed to ascendancies for incursion runners. They're great for travel and solo PvE, but they don't help fleet efficiency or safety. Sure, if most of the fleet had them, then yeah, that would definitely help with this per hour. However, we're also talking about a 40-man new bro-friendly fleet, so that's just never going to happen. Thus, I recommend plus 5 attribute implants for low and medium skill players. Polishing your skills can have a major impact on performance, and they can never be lost, so they're a great long-term investment. High skill players will probably get the most mileage out of the highly versatile Genos, which provide a bunch of small bonuses. For Lodgy in particular, the power grid and cap bonuses can help you to swap fitting and cap mods for things like signal amplifiers, while the speed and shield taken bonuses will make your semis and bazzies a little less squishy. Past that, sensor strength implants have a very narrow application, and they still only reduce your Arnon jam chance to 50% when combined with max skills and a signal amp. So, they're rather meh. And do note that the halos are a mixed bag. Decreasing your SIG will increase your damage mitigation, but it will also take other Lodgy longer to lock you. So, yeah, plus fives for low and medium skill players, and Genos for the vets. Well, at least for now. Let me preface this by saying that I wouldn't consider anything set in stone until you see it in the patch notes. Anyway, 
It seems like everyone is salivating over the slaves, but I consider them suboptimal for logic. In fact, they'll be little more than useless for the semi, which has like a 2k base shield HP. Bazzies would get more mileage out of it, but I don't think that they're going to provide enough of a bonus to remove a tanking mod or a rig. So, it won't be useless on a Bazzy, but considering the alternative, it won't be optimal either. Of course, they are a more versatile set, so I'd understand if players went that route. However, serious Logi Bros will want to go for the saviors. The reduced cycle time will increase repping power, allow for faster switches, and effectively improve the tank of the entire fleet. Well, except for you. Unfortunately, a reduced cycle time also means that they'll be hitting your cap harder. Of course, there are implants that can help with cap, and cap modules are supposed to be getting a buff. But since CCP has been stingy with the details, it's kind of useless to discuss potential fit and implant setups. In the meantime, however, I suggest polishing your cap and power grid skills as they will help open up your fitting options. Alright, this is out of the speculation phase and will be coming in the April patch. Regardless, the introduction of diminishing returns on reps shouldn't have that big of an effect on incursions. Even with 32 reps from 8 Logi ships all on a single target, the most heavily penalized rep will still be applying at 93% efficiency, so it shouldn't be an issue most of the time. Unfortunately, I have seen some close calls where every bit of rep and power was needed to save a ship, so even a 1 or 2% decrease in total reps applied will turn some super close calls into lost mails, but I understand why CCP made the change, and I agree with it, so moving on. Alright, I think that's it. Uh, I suppose I should have mentioned it at the beginning of part 1, but I think doing lodging and incursions is a great way to learn the role. Yes, you do need to be able to fly a T2 Logi ship, so the ISK and character skill requirements are rather high, but it does offer a great level of challenge for players. You'll have to deal with a respectable amount of damage and various forms of E-War, but all in a relatively controlled environment. After all, rats are more predictable than players, so they won't escalate, drop caps, or third-party you. Moreover, you'll be one of 5-8 to eight Logi, so your contribution will be meaningful, but everything isn't going to rest on your shoulders. In short, all of this should move you out of your comfort zone, but not throw you off the deep end. So, if you're interested in flying Logi, consider cutting your teeth in high-end PvE, and then taking what you learned into PvP. One last thing, I sometimes hear an E sound when aggro shows. I assume it has something to do with timers, but I don't know what's to deal with it, and why I don't always hear it. If anyone does know what's going on, please let me know. Alright, that's it. Don't forget to support all your favorite content creators, and until next time, fly smart.